you so much. The current education system is completely broken. Um, and it's failing our children. As Tony said, radical change is needed. If we don't make that change, then the next time that politicians do their next photo op in a school, look children in the eye and tell them a third of you are going to fail. We've got to fix it. A third of students failed their GCSEs last year. Over 200,000 students resat English and maths in England in 2022. When they do, the pass rate is dire. It's just over 30%. So the way in which we deliver education, the one-size-fits-all delivery of education, we know is inadequate. It leaves too many students struggling, struggling behind and too many who then need further challenge. Every student deserves a personalised education. When you ask people who is the most important person in the classroom, what would they say? The child. But who is the most powerful person in the classroom? It's the teacher. So why do we waste so much of their time? More than half of a teacher's time is spent micro-marking, micro-assessing, trying to figure out which child is doing what, how do I differentiate for every child in the classroom. That is impossible to do when you have 25 to 35 children in front of you every hour of every day. Over three quarters of teachers want to quit their jobs in the next three years. Why? Significantly because of workload. They are teachers by day and they are data analysts by night. So we need to free them up, we need to empower them and allow them to do what they came to do, which is teach. So a decade ago, we had that moment, third in my career, which Sal's explains is a sort of combination of delusion and optimism. About two miles away from here, we looked at the technology that is transforming every sector in the world. AI makes us more efficient, decisions can be more accurate, it personalises everything from healthcare advice to how we shop and how we save. And then we looked at the science of learning from motivation to memory. And we thought, let's combine these. Let's combine artificial intelligence with neuroscience and learning science and learn how every single brain in this room learns and apply this across every course, every curricula and every language. The problem is the data didn't exist. Sadly, it's in those exercise books, right? They're either in parents' lofts or they get recycled every year. And even those don't really tell you that when a child is learning, how long did they take to master that concept or answer a question? Was it two minutes or was it two hours? You would treat those children very, very differently in the classroom. So at Century, we combined those technologies and we built a machine that tracks every single mouse mo movement that a student makes. It tracks how they're learning on the system and tracks all of their learning behaviours as they're on the platform when they're learning and through formative and summative assessments. It learns the relationships between learning content and questions with a high degree of accuracy. It can learn just not if you're struggling, but why are you struggling, where you need stretch and where you need further challenge. The AI models look for similarities and connections in the content and it also analyzes what behaviors have been successful for students in the past and then for what should it recommend for you next. It will accurately predict how when Tony logs in, he performs on every question. It will predict how he's going to do on any learning objective and it's going to intervene before he gets stuck. I know Tony's looking at me saying, why didn't you give your Macroeconomics 101 to Liz and Quasi last autumn? Sorry. <laughs> the point is, it can personalise learning. It can personalise the pathway. Today, today, it has over 24 billion data points in the data lake. And you know that then if it can analyse that and aggregate that, it can instantly provide those insights to teachers so they have, they can stop their side gig from being a data analyst and they can have that data as and when they need it to make the intervention. So as you can see, Amelia here is going to log in. This is her recommended path. It tracks every mouse movement and boom, it's going to give her her recommended pathway. This is what you need to learn right now. I know if you're guessing, I know if you're hesitating, I know if you're skipping, I know your pace of learning, I know your knowledge, I know your skills, I know your gaps in skills, I know your memory function. When does something go from Tony's short-term to long-term memory? When can we give him that information so that can go into his long-term memory and then he can build skills upon that knowledge? It interleaves, it does space learning across the subjects to optimise memory. If you're struggling in forces in physics, the technology can identify to the physics teacher it's not physics you get forces it's actually the trigonometry in maths and then it gives you the maths to fix the physics instantly it offers Amelia that personalized pathway and then the teacher that powerful person in the classroom well the teacher 
can look at it instantly with doing no work. Who needs stretch? Who do I praise for commitment? Who needs support? Right? Who can I identify straight away and go and make that timely targeted intervention? The teacher's informed when there are misconceptions in class. We were going to do Pythagoras next week, but if two-thirds of my class think that two to the power four is eight, then actually, no, I need to go back to roots and powers. There's no point teaching Pythagoras next week. That's my intervention. The technology told me straight away, this is artificial intelligence empowering human intelligence. This is where AI augments HI. There is then pupil-level data for the student, the teacher, the guardian, where to focus, where to challenge, that's big data analysis. Again, it's using the prediction, the probability on how you're going to perform, and then making that timely targeted intervention. It empowers the student, it gives them agency in their learning. Now, for the school, when they log in, they get this sort of data. Rather than waiting until August to see if your policies and your interventions in school are working, you can see real-time data any time of the year. You can have a look at any demographic in your school. How are my pupil premium boys, the boys with free school meals in my school, performing compared to the rest? What interventions do I need to make? You have access to live benchmarking data. So this is an all three private school, right? Anonymized data. I'm not going to say who it is. Um, you can't read the text on here, sadly. But what they can see here is that actually they thought they were doing really well in the sciences. But there's an area of chemistry key stage three where they're performing really, really not to standard, right? They're below zero. And so with live benchmarking, you can have a look in November, in February, as to how you're doing. And then the idea is to support your teachers. What do we need to do? What do we need to give you um, in order to support you to bring those standards up? They can dig deeper instantly to understand exactly what is happening, what's happening in every class, and then back to what's happening in every child. We have the power to put the right information in the right hands of school leaders. If we want to raise the bar, the point is we can't be afraid of it, right? We can leverage this to support schools. A multi-academy trust can see where to pull resources when some of their schools are performing again to the left of zero, you can see, and others are performing well. What are they doing in the ones that are performing well, and how can we leverage that to support the schools that aren't? And in terms of policy making, this is where AI and big data can really have a powerful impact. We can have evidence-based policy making. You can see instantly how the country is doing, county by county, region by region, in literacy, numeracy, the sciences. Right? When levelling up is the agenda, you can see how the north, the south and the midlands compare. Ryan, you'll be really pleased to know that Liverpool, great, is <laughs> getting there. He's very happy. And you can model how interventions can make a difference when resources should be spent, where they are being spent, and then what the impact is that they're having. But what's really interesting about this data is that you can see it real time. You don't need to wait for years of GCSE results and SATS results. Now, this is not the future of education. It's the now. Centuries technology is used in schools across 56 countries. It's in 1,500 schools here in Britain. But adoption is far more rapid in the private sector. There isn't a marquee private British international school group in the world not using this technology in some or all of their schools, and it's just launched in the USA. The impact is material. Over 1 million questions answered a day, over 80 million lessons delivered, 24 billion data points. It's one of the most powerful technologies in the world that's developed here in London and autonomously intervenes with students' misconceptions every week at least half a million times. This technology is also delivering change. One hour per week, and it, you get 10 times the national average grade improvement. Now, that's actually research students, arguably one of the most challenging demographics in the country. Students exceed their predicted grades at all levels of academic achievement. What would you do if I gave you six hours a week back? That's nearly a working day. And it's been declared as the top impact technology by teachers agreeing that it helps students progress. The AI technology which delivers truly personalised education and empowers our teachers is already here. Now, I've been talking about AI for a decade. Education, particularly state education, is afraid of it. And ChatGPT came out in November and suddenly everyone was talking about it. They were all over the place and they were wondering whether their children and the children in their classrooms were inspiring their homework with it. But that's only a small part of artificial intelligence. It has the power to truly transform. Think about it this way. AI is a little bit like your mother-in-law. 
It will involve itself in all of your relationships with all of your stakeholders. You can hide and you can pretend that it's not there, but it's not going to go away. It's up to you whether it's going to be super helpful or completely overbearing, and it's here to stay, so you need to get out and embrace it. Now, private schools have. They're at the forefront of using this technology, and we cannot risk our state schools being left behind. We can continue to convince ourselves that we are doing the best that we possibly can, can for our children and for our teachers, despite the mounting evidence to the contrary. The guarantee of inertia, however, is worse than the potential for failure. And instead, we can choose to embrace innovation. Thank you very much.